Hey, I'm over here. My name's Anwar. Hey, I'm, a dating I'm coach over for here. Black women, and so often I hear about black women who are just focused on dating black men. And I wanted to break down the numbers because I was an undergrad statistics major, so I look up at love quantitatively and qualitatively. So I wanted to break it down to let you know how difficult you are making your love life be just by focusing on black men. Okay? So for every hundred men. 13% of those men are black, so you have 13 men out of 100. Now, 80% of those guys are not going to be ready for a relationship. That's across the board. Any color of guy, they're just not going to be ready if they're single. Yeah, so we go from 13 to 3. Now, if we take into account unemployment, underemployment, gay, and in prison, you are looking at 2 out of every 100 men, 2 black men, out of every hundred men that are going to be bare minimum available for a relationship. So that's one out of 50, okay? One out of 50. Now, I wanna talk about the talented 10th qualities that so many of you all are looking at, right? He's gotta be six foot feet or taller. He's gotta have a graduate degree, six figures. When you have that criteria, you are looking at one out of every 250 men, okay? Now, if you just look at everybody, right, and you do the same math, the same statistics, one out of every seven guys is ready for a relationship. So if you're focusing on just black guys, bare minimum, it's seven times harder. If you are focused on the talented 10th, you are making it 35 times harder to get your guy. We get to do it easier. And if you want to learn how to do this well, girl, you better talk to me. Now, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. If you want to keep on making love hard, girl, by all means, it's your love life. Get your life. There are non-black men checking for you, and you get to make this love life thing much easier by opening and widening your net and just focusing on the men that are going to treat you the best, regardless of what color they are. I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this going to convince you to date everybody? Please say yes. Hey, I'm over here. Hey, I'm over here. <laughs> Jaleesa, thank you for waiting patiently, Jaleesa. How you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well, Jaleesa. Thank you for waiting patiently. The floor is yours, man. What, what's, what's, your, what's your initial thoughts on that audio, man? How you feel? Well, I have dated all different types of guys as far as I've had a white boyfriend that I was in a relationship. I've dated a Hispanic boy. I've dated, um, what else, Asian, Black. And at the end of the day, one thing that I had to realize is that I was attracting the same type of guy. It was like the same spirit in a different body. And... Um, you know, it was all the same thing in every relationship. It was like I dated them. They wanted to like wife me up as quick as possible. They came off as charming and really like sweet in the beginning. And then after like that, I love you word came out, it, they changed up and like the monster in them came out, the demon in them came out. And you know, at the end of the day, after going through those toxic relationships, I felt like weighed down by depression and anxiety and I like told my story on social media and then I had an encounter with Jesus and he basically revealed to me that the reason why I was going through all of those toxic relationships and attracting the same exact person in a different body was because regardless of the race I want to put that out there was literally because my dad had that same spirit in him he had the spirit of a narcissist which is the Jezebel spirit and I literally was groomed to accept his behavior like my dad could do no wrong in my eyes I was a very like much a people pleaser when it came to my dad and I was a people pleaser in all of my relationships and it was literally the unhealed part of me that I was attracting in the men that I chose so it's so much deeper than like race because at the end of the day if you have some unhealed trauma and stuff that you went through in your life and you don't heal that then you'll attract that in the men that you choose regardless of the race but there are I like, agree really like good black man men in this world but you won't even like and until you heal that trauma that's within yourself like you're not even going to find you're not even going to be checking for them you're not even going to be like looking in their direction and they're not going to be looking in your direction because it's like the spirits aren't aligned but one thing that i had to do is like now i'm just on this journey where i'm just like 
seeking God alone so he can get me together and he can like heal anything that has been like, you know, chilling in my subconscious mind that I just blocked out to like cope and keep going without healing it. And at the end of the day, I trust that when the time is right, I'll find a man that loves him as much as I do. And he will love me because he knows that like he loves God. So at the end of the day, if he loves God, then he's going to love his daughter just as much as God loves me. And I'll recognize his love. I'll recognize God's love rather through the man. But yeah, discernment is something that you need because regardless of what race you're checking for, it doesn't matter if they're black, whatever, white, Puerto Rican, Haitian, yellow with pink polka dots. If you don't have discernment and you have unhealed trauma and you were accepting something growing up that was not actually healthy, you will attract that in men, period. So, uh, Jaleesa, how old are you? I'm 27. Okay. Um, um, so do you think that, um, other groups of men largely, um, do you think other groups of men in large, uh, actually want to pursue black women for serious relationships even to the extent of marriage. And again, in large, okay? So I know that there's a white boy named Cody and a Mexican guy named Victor and a Asian <laughs> guy named Xuing Zhuang. Like, I understand that there's, that these people exist, but in large, do you think that gr gr other groups of men want to pursue black women for serious relationships and marriage? I can only speak off of like my like situation like off of like me and honestly a lot of white men were checking for me and like for serious relationship like trying to date me and stuff but like not for nothing after because i hadn't healed after my first relationship was which was when i was 19 with like a 30 year old one year old white man just being honest i was like okay let's we need to try something different and that's why i chose a different type of man like someone who was from like a different race and at the end of the day it was the same thing but at the end of the day to answer your question I, it depends on the one the black woman but at if it just depends it just depends on who you are because i think it has a lot more to do with like your character and the way you carry yourself than anything okay um but do you think do you think um, Cody's mom wants him to bring a black woman named Jaleesa to the potluck? Do you think, do you think, do you think, um, do you think uh, uh, Benito's, Benito's parents want him to bring um, uh, Jaleesa to the quinceanera? Like, do you really think that they want that? Absolutely not. You know, it depends on the parents because not every parent is yeah. like that. I've had some parents that were willing and ready to accept me because of who I am and how I carry myself. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of parents, a lot more parents who don't like that. And I've even dated someone who like never wanted to bring me around his parents because they didn't like black want because I was black. But so, yeah, like, but I could see both sides of the spectrum, but it's not every single it's not right. like I only had one situation where there was like someone that I dated that didn't want me to see their parents because I was going to be judged. Right. So. So, again, Julie, so we, we know it's not all white people. We know it's not all Asian people. We know it's not all Hispanic people. We know it's not all whatever group of people. But we can we can can we agree for the most part that. You know, if, if if it was up to these people's family that, you know, they would preferably want them to bring someone in their own culture of their own home as opposed to Jaleesa. I can't agree with that, but I be believe that has a lot to do with the stereotype. And I've had, you know, situations where I go around the parents and then they meet me and they're like, they fall in love with me because of how I carry myself and my character. So if, so yeah, because of the media, the stereotype that they put on the media of who black women are and black yeah. men, that has a lot to do with the way that parents see us because they don't interact with us on a regular. They only see what the TV and the television media portray. Exactly. Right. Right. And, and that's, that's, that's fair to say and all like, Oh, it's, it's the media and this, that, and the third and the stereotypes. But at the end of the day, if 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 you know in your heart of hearts that most of these people already see you in a certain light, whether they're justified in seeing you in that light or not, 
do you want someone that's going to like welcome you with open arms or do you want someone that's going to like open the door and, you know, look you up and down and talk to you for five minutes and then make a judgment on you and then open their arms to you? Well, of course you want to be accepted 100%, but I feel like my spirit outshines my flesh. So, you know, they might have that initial assumption of who I am, but at the end of the day, once they get to know me, they're going to know that that's not who I am and they're going to be like, wow. And I could even have a chance to change their perception on how they view other black people because of who I am. Okay. So what, what do, do you, are you right now? Are you, are you someone that you want to exclusively date black men or are you open to dating everyone? So at the end of the day, like my, like I would love to date like a God fearing black man, but if there's someone else that I feel like our spirits align and you know, my God in heaven, like my father in heaven gives me the go, then I'm gonna give it a shot. So do you have a preference or do you not have a preference? Not really, no. Honestly, I never discriminated, like, in life. Never have. So. Okay. It's about the spirit. But it's like the spirit inside the person that I'm checking for because, you know, in the past, checking on looks. And just to point out, I never even follow any of those qualities that are on your screen. Six feet taller, like, everyone that I've dated besides one person was under six feet graduated college uh none of them graduated college and six figures uh nope never was that blessed <laughs> do you do you do you aspire to be married and have like a family one day absolutely okay so um even though you said that you know you don't uh really subscribe to like whatever qualities this man has on his spreadsheet you know on my green screen um <laughs> I'm assuming that there are you do have certain qualities mm -hmm. that you look for within a man other than him being God fearing, because he, he could be a God fearing man that 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 work at Chuck E. Cheese and is not ambitious and doesn't want anything greater for his life. So, well, we not... oh, I'll ahead. let you talk. I don't want to interrupt you. Go ahead. Um, Honestly, when it comes to a, someone who truly serves God and follows God's will, God is, and when God verifies that man for me, it's not going to be a man that's an unambition, doesn't have ambition, and it's working at Chuck E. Cheese. Because at the end of the day, God wants more for us. And if he's actually walking in God's will for his life, he, it's not going to be at Chuck E. Cheese. And he's not, he's going to have ambition because that's who our father in heaven grooms us to be. Like I was a person who wasn't, didn't have myself together. I was very much living my best life as, so I put it out there to be assumed that way. Um, hot girl summer, going out every single weekend, drinking all the time, all of that because, you know, I was following the media and he's literally changed me as a person. I don't have a desire to do that anymore. I know my purpose. I know what I'm supposed to do with this life that I have because I've been seeking him wholesomely and just him. And I said, screw everybody else. I'm, I want to know what my true purpose is. So my father in heaven, when he sends the man that's for me and we cross paths, they're going to be just as ambitious as I am. Or otherwise, that discernment's going to go off because at the end of the day, like God confirms this. Like that's what the Holy Spirit is. Okay. So how long have you been on your spiritual journey? Um, honestly, only since August. Like ever since I exposed my sin, in August of last year, like God's been walking with me. Like a, there's a lot of religious people out here who claim to like be a Christian and all that, but they never like revealed their truth. But I realized that was the whole key. Like your truth is the key. Like when you literally expose your sin, that was what gives you the strong relationship with God. And um, ever since then, he's been revealing to me, like my truth, my story, that is literally my purpose to like, help people through what I've discovered because he revealed the truth about everything. It wasn't just like why I was attracting narcissists. It was a truth about every single thing that I did in my life. There was a door that opened me up to that sin. So now that I know what I know, I know that the guy that God sends me, he's going to be someone who's just as, as aligned with his purpose as I am, you know, because like God wants me to have someone that reflects his love. Like that's the whole point of seeking God, you know, his love. So then you can discern when you're, when you're, when you're, uh, in the presence of his love or in the presence of counterfeit love. And that's what a lot of women go for, regardless of race, counterfeit love. That's fake. Okay. So you, so you said that you really been on your spiritual journey since like August of 2022, right? Yep. Not long okay. at all. 
Okay, so what if, what if this man that's also 27 years old and he been on his he started his spiritual journey in August of 2022 since he's been in high school, since he got out of high school, like right now he work at Chuck E. Cheese. Um he work at he work part-time at Chuck E. Cheese. He um he worked part-time at Dunkin' Donuts. He a bartender on the weekends. He he's a uh, he work at the gas station sometimes like Mm -hmm. Ooh, all like those jobs? so No, no, I'm I'm saying this because, because you know, I, I'm not gonna put words in your mouth. I'm going to ask you: Are you saying that? Are you saying that a man that is on his spiritual journey and is God fearing wouldn't be working at Chuck E. Cheese? I'm saying that at the end of the day, Yes, there is a big chance that you could be working as at Chuck E. Cheese, but the truth behind everything is that God doesn't want his children who are really walking in his will working in the matrix. For example, God told me to quit my job in August. And like when my spiritual journey started, like I felt in my intuition, quit your job. And at the end of the day, I've quit and I haven't been working since because now I'm aligned with my purpose and I'm selling my car so I can make this perfect purpose become a reality and everything. Because at the end of the day, like I'm willing to sacrifice like my comfortability to make this purpose come true because now I have God. I don't look for my my uh, value in material things. So if the man is struggling, I will be if he has God's spirit within him because I can discern it now because I have God's spirit and he is on the streets. But he is like God fearing and he is when I speak to him, I feel God speaking through him. Um, I don't care where he works, what he does at the end of the day. If that's my husband, that's my husband, period. Like, I, that's the thing. I never was checking for men like the assumption that you have on women. I was never checking for men like that when I was living in the world and before God like revealed like the truth behind certain things. Yeah, I was checking for men like that. But like I still was very humble because I accepted way less and um. You know, the charm, like the personality, the potential is what I looked after. It wasn't so much as, oh, he got to have six figures and he got to be six feet tall. Like, I've never been that superficial person. Like, I didn't like the, the first guy that I dated when he was 31. When I first met him, he didn't have a job. Yes, like a month or two in to our relationship, he got a job and he was making good money. But At the end of the day, when I first started, when I first met him, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to date this 31 year old because he has a job and he can support me and all that stuff. Because at first he didn't even have a job. When I was going over his house to smoke some hookah, I was paying for the hookah at 19. So like, I'm just different. I'm not built like that. So that leads me to say too, like when you're looking for the women that you're looking for, are you looking just on Instagram? Like when, like, what are you getting your statistics from? Because I know a lot of humble women, right. That accept way less than they deserve. And we'll build a man up like that's like I saw that happen. Like maybe it's just where I live, like in this small town in New York. But I see that all the time. A woman literally taking a man under her her wing and trying to build him up. Okay, so you said you quit your job last year, right? So you can be in your purpose. Yes. Okay, so have you have have you been doing? Have you been working for any company or any business at all to earn income while you've been on your purpose? Nope, I haven't been working for anything. So you haven't. So you haven't. You haven't been earning any money since last year. Then correct. Um. Well, when I quit my job, I had just won an unemployment case with a previous job. So for a while, I was on unemployment, which that was nothing but God because I got quit. I got fired from that job because it was back when I was drinking and stuff. I was very depressed around that time. Like I was dealing with the narcissist who kept me up all night. But um, yeah, I ended up losing my job from like drinking and all that calling out. And I was not supposed to get unemployment at all. Like I got fired for misconduct. They had mad written warnings. But somehow, even when they took me and appealed the approval and everything, I ended up getting unemployment. So when I God called me to quit the job that I was working at because I had started to like get more into like my faith and all that. And I was posting stuff on my social media and the person at my job this randomly one day started mocking my religious beliefs. like what I believed in, I don't even like the, the word religious, but what I started knocking, like the fact that I believed in Jesus and I was posting about it. Um, when God told me to quit, I quit. And I like was literally like, didn't even want to quit. But like, I just knew that God was telling me to quit. And I had to, like, I physically couldn't stay there. Like it was just like a lot going on. So um, yeah, I ended up quitting. 
And yeah, I got an unemployment for a while, but now my unemployment's out. If you look on my page, I've actually been like open about it and posting about how like, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm literally depending on someone to buy my car to uh, pay my rent. But okay. So, 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 so if, if that's the current situation that you're in, if God told you, I'm getting to a, a real King Tony. So if, if God told you to, you know, quit your job and, and live in your purpose and, you know, for a while you were, you know, on, you were, you know, receiving income from unemployment, but that's done now. And Mm-hmm. now, you know, you're, uh, you're, um, you know, trying to sell your car so you can make some money to have some rent. So if a man, if a tw- another 27 year old man that is currently working at Chuck E. Cheese part-time and Dunkin' Donuts part-time, and he a bartender on the weekends, if, if he's making a stable income and he's a God fearing man and he's on his purpose, I don't understand why you would have any problem, um, you know, having like having a man like that in your life. And I say Because that because that's based off your own understanding. So you assume that that if he was following God, that God would have him working three different jobs. But that's not walking in God's will. God doesn't want him to be a bartender. God doesn't want him to be stressing himself out that like out like stressing himself out like that. Like the burden that God puts on you is light. Like it's it's like it's not heavy. So at the end of the day, he wouldn't be fully working, walking in his purpose. But, you know, and even right now with my situation, I'm not checking for no man. I'm not looking for no man. I'm focused on my purpose. Like at the end of the day, Oh, man. like my purpose is my goal. Like it's like you have to You have establish yourself before you go looking for someone else. But let's say I was, okay? Julissa, really quick, really quick, really quick. So, so, so a man, a man that's working two, three jobs, you're saying that he's, he's not, you know, he, he's, he's not in God's light or whatever, but someone that's not employed, and not getting any income, they're fully in God's light and, you know, w- within their purpose, right? No, Like, what I, I'm I saying just, I, is, I just, I don't understand, I don't what understand I'm saying how, if, is if like, this man, one second, if this man been on his spiritual journey since last August, just like you, and he's 27, just like you, and he's trying to turn his life around for the better, but it's not going to happen in one night, so he's, he's, he's working at Dunkin' Donuts in the morning, He's working at he's working at Chuck E. Cheese in the evening. He being a bartender from 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 nine p.m. to two a.m. on the weekend, and he's I don't know. Let's maybe maybe he's maybe he's going to school part time. Whatever he's doing, he's on a spiritual journey, and he's trying to live within his quote unquote purpose. How is he not living in his purpose? But a woman who don't got a job at all and is trying to sell her car to get some money. How is she living in her purpose? Okay, so here's the thing. One thing you have to realize is when Jesus walked the earth, he was homeless. So God's not saying clapping for the man who's out here killing himself, working for the working for um the matrix, like trying to serve the matrix. At the end of the day, God is trying to pull his people out of the matrix and say, depend on me. Like you don't need to go work for the man. Like you, if you are working three different jobs, then when are you aligned with God's purpose for you? His purpose for you is to spread the gospel. His purpose for you is to create something. that will glorify him Thank you, Miss so at Feminine. the end of the day Nice meeting you, ma'am. You're always, I'm sorry, Jaleesa. You're always welcome here. You have a great day, all right, uh, Miss Think Feminine? yes you too thank you All right, bye-bye. and trust and believe Bye i just bye. went grocery shopping today like i i'm god's making it happen like he lets me know when to do certain things like i sold sold a few things that i don't use and i'm making a way like i'm not hungry i'm not starving like there ain't nothing like that going on like at the end of the day god provides for me like I just recently got a check. I don't even know where the check came from in the mail. So God makes a way. So don't make, don't come into a like agreement of the fact that like, oh, I'm struggling and all that because someone literally is interested in my car. They're coming on Monday to buy it. So God will make a way. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, Someone who's working three different jobs and all that, when does he have time to work on his perfect purpose or even going to school? Like, don't you know the educational system? Like, I was like, so I felt like a failure because I didn't go to school, you know, for a long time because like everybody put all this pressure for me. Like, that is how you reach success. But come to find, come to find out, I didn't excel in school because God didn't want me to. God didn't want me to be Wait, indoctrinated. wait, 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 I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Wait, wait, 
Did you just say that you didn't excel in school because God didn't want you to excel in school? I didn't stutter. I, that's exactly what I said. Oh, Lord. Now, the, re now le the reason why I say that is because in these schools, even in high school, middle school, they indoctrinate you with all of this stuff that's false. Like a lot of the stuff that they teach you in school is not even like necessary for you to actually walk in your purpose. And then the world makes you feel like you're failing at life for not excelling in, in school. When in reality, someone who literally has like an eighth grade education can literally reach success 100% if they were to walk with God and actually be fulfilled in life. But you know, because the world in the media doesn't normalize that aspect of that being actual fact, um, people go and they go to school and they end up taking up something that they don't even make fun money for in the end. But, um, you know, that's a whole nother conversation. But, you know, at the end of the day, one thing one thing you realize when you actually walk with God is that a lot of the things that they show you on the media, a lot of the things that they teach you in the schools, everything is just a distraction. And that's nothing but the truth. Like, it's just fact. But, you know, that is it's very unnormal to hear that. Like, oh, what do you mean? God doesn't want you to go to college. Well, um, if the we got the whole Bible, the Bible's not telling you nothing about college. God said that he is the teacher, not the woman that you went to class and saw in school. So at the end of the day, I've learned more just in these few months of seeking after God alone than I learned from my mom, my dad, school, anything. Because they don't teach you actually how to be like a good human being like in school. They don't teach you how to actually like have like morals in school like honestly it's just a bunch of like worldly wisdom that doesn't mean nothing when you stand before your father in heaven on judgment day and that's just a fact like what i'm working on now what i am literally working on now like the purpose that god has for me it's going to shake the world and you guys are going to see me and you're going to be like, wow, that's the girl that was on live that was talking about. And I'm not saying it's going to be because I'm like having all this money and stuff because I'm not even searching, at, seeking after that. But it's going to be like, you know, like that was her because it's like something that's going to bring people closer to God. And he has a purpose like that for all of us. And the truth is, it's our it's the pain that we went through. People think, oh, we're supposed to live this life and be happy with no pain. No, uh, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest warriors, period. So when you overcome something and you're able to shake something off and become better from that situation instead of letting it break you like it had the intention to do, just know that that wasn't you alone. God gave you the strength and it's for a reason. Moses, Moses, uh, Moses, come up. Moses, come up. Oh, man, Moses. What? You know who that is? Yeah, he... You talked to him before or something? Yeah, just earlier today. Oh. Okay. I, yeah, I seen I seen uh Moses in here and he was commenting. He said something about I can't you have to invite me. Okay, Moses. Moses, let me Moses, let me play the audio one more time and then I'll and then I'll invite you. Um I took a, a survey at work and they were talking about a chameleon. I don't even know what that is, but like Nope, I'm just someone that serves God. I'm not trying to put on a show for anyone. I could sit here and tell you all the terrible things that I've done in life because God freed me from that shame at the end of the day. Like I've went, I've done like every sin that you could think of. Like I used to be attracted to women and I struggled with that my whole life as like a little girl. And at the end of the day, God revealed to me like there's a spirit behind that. Like there's a real life devil that tries to get in your ear and convince you to be certain things that you're not even, that you aren't. And it's all to bring you away from your purpose. But you know, that's a whole nother topic because at the end of the day, if I sit here and really get into it, you guys are going to think I'm crazier than I am. You guys going to what, what, what has, uh, what has God revealed to you about me? Um, well, you lean on your own understanding a lot. Like you see things in the world and you just take them as they are and what's shown to you instead of like, like seeking God for those answers. Because at the end of the day, there's a root to every situation. So when you see these women and they're putting themselves out there and they're showing, like I used to be like that too, where I like went on social media and showed my body and all that. And it was literally because I was craving attention that I didn't get from my father. So me getting that validation of like just someone saying I was beautiful or something from a man, like 
that gave me like that that was like rooted in childhood trauma like I craved that so much because of what I was lacking in like my childhood from my dad like it was so at the end of the day there's a root to every situation so we instead of act like targeting women and even targeting men because like with men the way they treat um women like black men the way they treat women a lot of that is rooted in how their mothers treated them wait wait like, wait 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 how how do black men treat black women no i'm saying in general like what how, like how the way do black like, men treat oh, women so like I personally for me I've had a lot of black men say they don't even like black women like they don't date black women um they're they're rude they have like a stereotype of them without even knowing them first like just because of like the media and everything they like glorify light-skinned women and put down black-skinned women and that was that I used to get so offended at that at one point but then I realized that a lot of that like I'd be like your mom's black like how can you like treat your own people like that and at the end of the day it's because they're they have had a lot of trauma from their mo mother and their mother fit every stereotype that the world ga gave us so that's why they ultimately thought that oh all black women are like this like it's all there's a root to everything that's all i'm saying like it's never just like oh i'm doing this just because i'm doing this because i decided to it's rooted in something so so do you think so do you think the the black men that have told you personally these things do you think they're um, indicative of a large a lot of the of the majority of black men? Um, absolutely. Well, um, hmm, because I that would mean like I talk to a lot of black men, but I feel like a lot of black men do think this way because like if you look at these idols, because that's what they are, what they show on the television, they are idols like uh, Kodak Black, uh, Pop Smoke did it where they have a large like impact on a lot of people who look up to them right and they they glorify light skinned women so then in turn what do their their uh their followers do because that's what it is their followers their fans are followers they follow what they see in the television or the even the way that black women are portrayed on the media they are portrayed in a very stereotypical way so at the end of the day what do what do people do in their brain they stereotype us and they put those stereotypes on us as well just like they do with black men there's there no there's no different and it's because that stuff is objectively put on the screen so that people can literally like literally just mirror what they see on the television because they don't find their identity in christ they find their identity through the television and like what they sh what they think is success because the media portrays that as success same with women and what they do, how they are out here, like love and hip hop. Like we don't got a show like the Huxtables anymore. We don't have a show like Family Matters anymore. We have love and hip hop. So what do women do? Young women that are in middle school, they're watching love and hip hop is right on the television. All they have to do is turn to the channel and they mirror that behavior because they're young, they're impressionable. And at the end of the day, that's why we see what we see. Like people glorifying, oh, I got an OnlyFans. I want, made one million on OnlyFans. Yeah. So then you have young children who go out and they do the same exact thing because they see this on the media. So, you know, the media indoctrinates us more than the Bible ever will. And that's just something that, like, I need to put out there because people say the Bible indoctrinates you, but the Bible has made me into a woman that doesn't have to drink to be happy doesn't have to not the bible rather jesus did that but you know at the end of the day i don't go out to get like i don't have to drink to be happy i don't search for validation i post about jesus jesus on my social media i don't even post myself anymore i literally deleted all my pictures because i realized i don't need a man to tell me i'm beautiful to feel beautiful god does that so you know but the media doesn't tell us about god the media tells us about everything else so that's what we look after and at the end of the day we're indoctrinated by the media and we were from a young age through artists and uh celebrities and all of that and now we mirror them instead of being who god tells us to be like the proverbs 31 woman you don't see that it's rare but once you become that you attract that okay i'm gonna say something really quick and then i'm gonna play this audio and then i am gonna bring moses up here um okay i just i just want you to know you know, um, it's, it's great that you're on your spiritual journey, but while you're on your spiritual journey, I just want you to, to know going forward that um, 
And you know, I, 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 I am a man. I am a man that believes in God. I am a spiritual person. Um, you know, um, you know, I did grow up going to church and all of that, but you need to understand as well that not everyone believes in what you believe in. Not everyone, um, not everyone believes in religion and you, you do need to, I'm not saying that, well, you are, I, I do feel like you're kind of doing this. Look, when you're on your spiritual journey, don't be out here trying to, um, you know, put, push your beliefs, um, on to other people. Cause like I said, there's some people that they, they don't believe in, in religion. They don't believe in God. There's some people that are atheists. There's people that believe and don't believe in a lot of things. And you, myself, and nobody in this room is in any position to tell people what they should and should not believe in, or, um, you know, what's right or what's wrong. Like everyone is entitled to like live their life. However they want to like live their life. Um, you know, whether they see it as right or wrong, whether you or I see it as right or wrong. So you can be on your spiritual journey, but like be on your spiritual journey uh, on your own. Um, you know, if someone if someone expresses to you that they believe in what you believe in, you know, y'all can rock out. But don't try to like push that onto um other people. But let me play this. Let me you play this audio. Something? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I just want to say that I understand what you're saying, you know, but I also understand what God said. And God said for me to deliver his truth, whether it makes people uncomfortable or not. And he also said in John 15, 18, if the world hates you, just know that it hated me first, meaning that everybody's not going to accept the truth that you have to deliver because a lot of people are uncomfortable with the truth. But that doesn't mean that you simmer yourself down and you don't deliver it. So at the end of the day, I will keep on delivering the truth. And if you don't want to accept it, guess what? You have free will to accept it or decline it. That's your choice. That's your free will. You can definitely do as you please, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. God bless you. All right.